the weather's nice, so let's just blast through this. So back on these. The writer here is Benjamin Percy, and the artist is Rafa Labosco. Black Box, the James Bond Dynamite comic series book. What I really enjoyed about this is the artwork. Rafa really did something special here. I keep saying early on they were trying to do Fleming, but it feels like in the Dynamite series they found their groove, figured out how they could do Bond, Fleming, touches a cinematic, but make it a comic. But what I liked about this in particular was how stylized it was. When we're in familiar locations, it might be slightly subdued, but then once Bond goes to Japan, it really dials up. And it's this really intense way of conveying the tone, emotions, tension. It feels like once Bond gets to Japan, the story tilts on an axis and the artwork changes stylistically. It makes you feel like you're in a different world. It's new and intimidating. And this was really exciting to see in this Dynamite comic series. I feel that they used the comic graphic novel medium in a way that you just couldn't do in film or novels. These are different mediums and you have different tools at your disposal to tell the story. And what is the story? Well, it starts off Fleming with a bit of skiing and a cool MacGuffin, Black Box. M informs Bond of this device called Black Box named after what I assume is the plane device. And it's a repository for all the information. It's like WikiLeaks on steroids. In the wrong hands, it could be very dangerous. In the hands of MI6, it could make them very powerful. And there's a weird tension in this scene. It definitely feels like the subtext is M personally doesn't want this black box in the wrong hands. So Bond goes to Japan to find the black box. He enters this new world of Japan. It's not like London. He goes to the casino, there's that Yakuza element and the neon lighting of Tokyo. Remember what I said about the artwork here? Well, once he's in Japan, it's at its sort of peak in the style, conveying the tone. It's doing way more than just showing you nice pictures. And Percy, through the action, tries to bring you to all the Japanese locations. The gardens, a car chase through Tokyo, sumo wrestling fight, action on a bullet train. With a mysterious femme fatale and Bond girl, a very heightened villain who also has a henchman, this has all those Bond elements. It works as a heightened James Bond comic book adventure. I also like the cheeky Spectre imagery, the Tom Ford snow jacket, and the Aston Martin DB10. This was less like the Warren Ellis adventures at the start of this series. It's way more unrealistic, but what's brilliant is this artwork wouldn't work for Warren Ellis. This artwork suits this story perfectly. It's a comic book style. That doesn't mean it's childish. It just means it's gritty, but it plays with physics, uses stylistic artwork, and pushes the visuals to tell the story. What I think is they're using techniques you couldn't use in novels or cinema. This is a different medium. They really want to push that medium for this character. I really loved it. It was a quick read that was very enjoyable. I think the Bond comic series has found its groove now. It's niche. It's different from the novels. It's different from the films. But it sits right here. They take a good bit of Fleming. Some of the cinematic elements. Dial it up to 10. Maybe even 11. So let me know in the comments if you read this. Shoot that like button and subscribe for a Bond video every week. Thanks for watching. Started a new job, so I was finding it difficult to get the balance right. So I got a new schedule in place and the once a week will keep coming. But no time to die is coming so soon and I can't wait for it. Lots of videos to come in relation to that. Bye.